Welcome to the Southern Light Bible Study Series. My name is Pastor Quincy, and I'll be leading today's study of God's Word. Our title for today is, Why Do You Doubt? Why do you doubt? Have you ever doubted yourself? Have you ever been in a situation where you doubted your abilities? You even doubted in a situation where you knew you had learned the material. You, you, uh, the teacher taught the material, but in some form, in some fashion, you started to doubt yourself. You started to doubt the abilities that were given to you. You didn't trust what you saw, or sometimes you can't trust what you see. Sometimes it's about walking by faith. And so, Again, our title today is, Why Do You Doubt? Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We thank you for being able to get into your word. We thank you for being able to unpack your word, get an understanding, Lord God, so that we can walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. We pray that by the end of this lesson, Lord God, that if there's someone that says, what must I do to be saved, that they will commit their life to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray that you get the glory. We pray that you get the honor and the praise, Lord. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why do you doubt? That is the question for today's lesson. Why do you doubt? Or why do we doubt? Someone said, your faith can move mountains and your doubts can create them, right? And so there are times when our doubts create these mountains, these unpassable mountains that we're not able to come or move past, right? Our doubts sometimes will cause us to just get stuck, Right? Get stuck in your doubts. And so sometimes you have a legitimate reason to uh, doubt someone or something, right? Because of what they show you. All right? And sometimes our doubts are developed based on our life experience. Sometimes we get into a situation where, because of our upbringing, because of the things that we've been taught, so to speak, they cause us to doubt. Here are five common reasons why we self-doubt, all right? Number one, our past experiences and our mistakes cause us to doubt. Sometimes your past experiences, sometimes your past uh, mistakes will cause you to doubt yourself. We got to move away from our past. We got to learn how to move away from our past experiences. We got to learn how to move past our past mistakes and create or allow ourselves to get into that new space that God has created for us, right? Scripture says, behold, I do a new thing. And so that new thing that God is doing in your life I just encourage you to grab hold of that new thing. Number two, childhood upbringing. Sometimes your childhood upbringing will cause you to doubt yourself, right? Sometimes the words that either a parent or guardian said to you will cause you to doubt the person and the man that God has called you to be. We got to learn how to forget about those things. We got to learn how to renew our mind in Christ to allow God to give us understanding that we are his sons and his daughters. You got to allow God to heal you from that childhood trauma. Amen. Number three. Compromise. Or your companionship of others. It's sort of uh, similar, but understanding that those people that you walk with, 
if they walk in doubt, you are also going to walk in doubt as well, right? Because when you are together or if you walk together with someone, that person, if they're walking in doubt, you learn their same traits as well. We got to be uh, cautious of the people that we're around. We got to understand that we can't walk with other people that are not walking in faith. Amen. We have to be cautious of those things. Number four, new challenges. New challenges. Sometimes you get into that new place, you get into that new position, that new job, and you start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt the things that you learn. You paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for a degree, and you learn those things, but sometimes those new challenges, those new uh, challenges, even in God, sometimes we doubt the person of Christ because of the doubts that were planted in us when we were young. Amen? And last but not least, fear of failure, fear of success. Allowing our fears to cause us to doubt. I'm just afraid. I'm a... a dive a little bit more deeper into that as we get into um, our scripture reading but I'm just afraid I'm, I'm, I'm afraid even some people are afraid to be uh, successful some people are afraid of failing right we don't want other people to see us fail and I've just learned I'm a I love the game of basketball and it's something about you know you're sometimes you're not gonna have a great game sometimes you're going to fail sometimes you're going to have I call what's called matador defense sometimes you're going to be standing still and that person is going to go right by you right sometimes you're going to fail but it's up to you to look yourself in the mirror look at yourself in the mirror and motivate yourself in Christ speak to yourself and say I'm going to do better. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to be greater in Christ because greater is he that is in me than, it, than he that is in the world. Get the Holy Spirit involved. Say, Holy Spirit, strengthen me in this place. Help me to be better. Help me not to allow my fears to overcome me so that I'm stuck in this place. God does not want us to be stuck. Amen. And as we're talking about getting stuck, let's get into our scripture. Our scripture is coming from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22, verses 33. Amen? And uh, for some, this is one of their favorite scriptures, right? It's a familiar scripture, and it talks about Jesus walking on the water, or Jesus walking in a place where it was chaos and danger. Amen. The scripture starts off by saying, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And if we know anything about this particular uh, setting and situation, this was right after the miracle where Jesus fed, fed the 5,000 uh, men uh, plus women and children. So it was more than just the men, right? Jesus did this miracle. The disciples are there. <clears throat> they participated in it as well. And so at this time, Jesus is dismissing the crowd. And he's sending the disciples into the boat to meet him on the other side. John chapter 6 verses 12 through 15 gives us a clear picture of what the crowd intended to do which was to make Jesus king right then and there, right? <clears throat> and so there are times when Jesus will dismiss the crowd so that you're not a part of the schemes or the plots or even the motives that they would have. See, this crowd had a motive to make Jesus king right then and there. And Jesus, that wasn't his sole purpose. That wasn't the purpose that he came here for. He wasn't here to be king uh, at that time on this earth, right? There were some things, there was a process. We know that the process was for him to die for our sins, right? 
to 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 show that God had power to raise him from the dead. Amen. To have all power and authority and might to conquer death for you and me. Amen. And so Jesus didn't come so much to to reign in a, a physical form in this in this uh, world that we live in. Right. He came to take the keys of life and death from Satan. And so he wouldn't allow the disciples to be a part of that crowd. I got a question for you. What crowd is Jesus pushing you away from? Which crowd is Jesus saying, I don't need you to be a part of that crowd? That crowd that's whispering, that, car, that, cloud, that crowd that might be gossiping. Uh, which crowd is Jesus saying, I need you to get in the boat. I need you to separate yourself from that crowd. And I need you to meet me on the other side. Amen. God wants to separate you from the crowd. He wants to get you and, and make sure you're going in the right direction. But you got to get in the boat. Amen. Why is God telling me to go in that direction? You're saying, Lord, the crowd is there. I like the crowd. Being an introvert, I don't like crowds. You know, I, I you know, have uh, moments where I rather just be by myself. There's moments where I just rather be uh, not at a party or any of those type of things. But, you know, sometimes they're crowds. But God will give you insight and understanding on the people that he wants you to be around, right? And so that's why the, the, he made the disciples as a whole go and get in the boat. Excuse me. Your boat experience will separate you from the crowd. So God may be telling you, hey, go get in the boat. Go get into that place so that I can meet you there, right? It's about meeting Jesus. It's about getting in his presence. It's about getting into a place where you have audience with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But you got to get in the boat. Amen. Please note that your separation from the crowd is an opportunity to see Jesus in a new way so he can get you ready. Right. God is looking to get you ready in the place that you're in. But you got to get in the boat. Hallelujah. Get in the boat. Verse 23 says this. It says, and after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Jesus in this particular uh, scripture, he's showing his humanity, right? Uh, that pool of the crowd. Even Jesus felt the pool of the crowd. His <clears throat> very uh, flesh I believe was pulling at him in this moment. It was actually pulling at him in a way where he was uh, possibly, uh, he needed to, to gain some strength uh, in that place. And so he went to a solitary place to pray. You too, you need some strength. You need to get into that solitary place to pray, to seek God's face, to be able to Get into God's presence so he can strengthen you, so that his spirit can come over you, and that you can walk in renewed strength in him. Amen? So Jesus is uh, displaying uh, his human side in this um, in a way where he's showing us, hey, I was weak in this moment, but he knew what to do. He knew to go and pray. Amen? Verse 24 says this, but the boat by the time was long way from the land was beaten by the waves for the wind was against it. What happens when the people, places and things are against you, right? Sometimes you're trying to move forward and it's like, man, like these things are, are really coming against me. I feel as if I'm pushing against the wind. I feel like I'm being beaten by the waves. Your past can be like the waves beating you, which means they're torturing you, they're harassing you. 
They're always coming against you. Your past thoughts, your, your past relationships, uh, your past memories, those things are, are beating upon you like a wave. They're causing you to distress. They're torturing you. God is saying he's ready to get you free today. God is saying you're ready because you, you decided to get in the boat. And God is saying, I'm going to meet you in your boat experience to set you free. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'm not sure who you are, but the wave of sadness has been coming over you. I don't know who you are, but the wave of sadness. But God says in Isaiah 61 and 3 that he will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I just double dog dare you in that place of sadness to start praising and start worshiping the Lord. I just I just encourage you in the spirit of the Lord, in the spirit of boldness, just to start praising and worshiping God in the place that you are. And I guarantee you that the spirit of the living God will come upon you even now. The spirit of God will come upon you even now so that you are free in that place. Hallelujah. The wind can represent people who are against you, are hostile, who are contrary to the word of God. They're adverse, right? That adversary, right? Uh, sometimes that adversary could be on your job. <laughs> sometimes that adversary can be on your block. Sometimes that adversary can be in the grocery store. Sometimes that adversary can actually be me right? Sometimes that adversary can be the very person that you get up and you shower, you put on clothes, you, you make the outer appearance look good, right? But sometimes that adversary is you. Sometimes you're the reason why you can't move forward. And God is saying he wants you to get into your boat experience so that you can move to the other side. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Why would Jesus call you, call you to, to push you into a chaotic <clears throat> and dangerous situation? Why? Why would Jesus call the disciples to uh, get in the boat? Why would Jesus call them knowing that there was going to be a storm, knowing that there was going to be some chaos and some danger, right? Knowing that the waves and the winds would be against them. Why would Jesus call them into this type of situation? Well, I'm happy you asked. Let's read some more of the scripture. In verse 25, it says, And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Let's look at it like this. In ancient times, the night was divided into four watches, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to 12 midnight, 12 midnight to 3 a.m., 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus, walking on high ground at the north of the lake, clearly saw the boat fighting with the waves and came down to shore to help him, help them. Understand that Jesus is going to help you in your boat experience. He's going to help you to navigate in your boat experience. He knew what would be coming, but please note, it's better to have Jesus in the boat, around the boat, navigating you while you're in the boat, right, than to not have him at all. Because we're going to go through our experiences, but it's important to have Jesus in the boat, right? It's important to have him right there guiding us and leading us, encouraging us as we go through that storm. Because the chaos and the danger, those things are going to happen. That's part of life, right? We don't like it. We don't uh, feel comfortable in those circumstances. Well, some people do. Some people are actually comfortable in the chaos and danger. And you're trying to figure out why are they comfortable in that place? Because Jesus is not in the boat. Jesus is not in the boat. So that's the reason why 
they're comfortable. They grew up that way. They grew up in the chaos and the danger. Nobody has ever taught them how Jesus can quiet the storm, right? And so that's a familiar place for them. God is saying it's time out for you being in that familiar place of chaos and danger. It's time for you to come out of that place and have life and life to the full, life more abundantly. God is saying he wants you to take hold of that today. I got 10 minutes. So verse 26 says this, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. In other words, the disciples thought death was about to take them out. See, in those times, whenever you saw a premonition or you saw something uh, and you were in a dangerous situation, hey, they just felt like I'm about to die. I'm something. This thing is about to take me. It's about to take me out right, right here. But Jesus was not a part of death. He came to bring life and again, life more abundantly. But Jesus was not death walking on the sea, yet he was life and life more abundantly. Amen. Verse 27 says this, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart. It is I do not be afraid. God is saying, why are you in your boat situation? Take courage. Take up courage. Say, Holy Spirit, I'm afraid right now. I need you to help me. I need you to help me gain courage in this situation. I need you to help me to face this person. I need you to help me to get across this bridge or to get across this water right now, Lord, because it's dangerous. It's chaotic. I need you to help me out of this situation. And God is saying that he is here to meet you right where you are, to help you, to, to hold you, to carry you to the other side. Amen. In verse 28, it says, and Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Question, why are you in your boat situation? Have you ever thought about coming to Jesus where he was sometimes he's walking on the chaos sometimes he's walking right in the chaos and the danger just like he was in this particular scripture coming to jesus on the water coming to jesus where he is or walking to jesus where he is peter wanted to walk the way jesus walked <clears throat> In this way, it was over the chaos and the danger, over the chaos and the danger. And check this out. Peter's circumstance didn't change, right? Whether he was in the boat or out of the boat, his situation didn't change. The waves and the waters were still rolling. His circumstance didn't change. But check this out. He understood it was better to be where Jesus is, than to stay in the boat. Hallelujah. So I know that there's somebody in a chaotic, chaotic and dangerous situation. You've been walking by faith. You've been calling out to the Lord. And God is saying, I need you to get into my presence right now. Just spend some time on your face. Spend some time maybe fasting and praying right? Spend some time saying, Lord, I surrender all to you. And God is going to meet you because you're, you decided to go exactly where he is. You decided to go in the place where God is able to set you free from that place. Verse 29 says, and he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on water and came to Jesus. I got about four points right here. The boat is your comfort zone, even in chaos and danger. Sometimes we have our comfort zone. Sometimes we just want to stay in the boat, right? But Jesus is saying, meet me in the place where the chaos and the danger is happening around you. And because you meet me there, because you decided to meet me in that place, Let's check out. We'll read and see what Jesus did. 
Sometimes the chaos represents the confusion and disorder in your life. And I mentioned before how some people, they're comfortable in that place. It's been so chaotic in their, in their family, in their home life, from when they, uh, again, uh, we, uh, I mentioned in the beginning how one of the reasons or one of the reasons why uh, you get to the place where you doubt yourself is because of your childhood, right? Sometimes your childhood is the reason why those memories, those things that happen to you are the reason why you're so comfortable in the disorder and the confusion. God is saying it's time out for that. Number three. Jesus defied nature by walking on the water. He defied na the natural um, setting of things. You know, you walk on water, you're supposed to sink. You walk on water, you're supposed to sink and drown, um, especially when the waves and the winds are kicking up like that. But Jesus defied the natural order of things. And even in this, he's going to defy and pull you into that place where you're defined the natural. You're supposed to sink in that place. It's supposed to overcome you. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you peace in that place. Hallelujah. Again, Peter's circumstance didn't change. Yet, it was better to be with Jesus than to stay in the boat. Amen? Verse 30. It says, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. It began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Do you have the mindset to say, Lord, save me in this place? Cry out and say, humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm sinking right now. Save me. Save me. But again, the reason why he was sinking is because he saw the waves. He saw the waves. He saw the, the winds and the waves. If you notice in verse number 26, it says, But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, and in this particular verse, it says, But when he saw the waves. So there's a difference in the way that we see things, right? All right. There's a way that God is calling us to see things in the spirit. But we're so busy looking at them in the natural. God is saying it's time out for you looking at those things in the natural. He's saying, get on my level, get on my plane, get where I am so you can see this thing at a different level. See, because when they saw Jesus walking on the water, there was a different type of insight that they saw him, saw him as he walked on the water, which caused Peter to want to be where Jesus was. To, it, it caused Peter to say, I want to walk on this water, right? But when he took his focus off of that place, he started looking it from the natural eye. He became afraid and fearful and began to sink. I just want to challenge you today. Keep your spiritual lens on. Keep the spirit of God in you so that you can see things the way Jesus will want you to see them. Peter saw the wind and was afraid, but the disciples saw Jesus and Peter got inspired to walk where Jesus walked. It really makes a difference if we keep our eyes on Jesus and not the problem. The problem will cause you to doubt yourself. It makes a difference on how you see Jesus. Keep your spiritual glasses on. My pastor would always say that the water represents those things that are uncontrollable. Shout out to Pastor Jay. But the water also represents the chaos and the danger. Water can cause you to drown. Water can just take over, right? And water or that situation can cause you to fear. It says in verse 31, and we're wrapping it up, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, O you of little faith, 
Why do you doubt? Trust, O oh you of little faith. Are you lacking confidence in Christ? God is saying he's going to strengthen you. God is saying, I need you to keep your eyes stayed on me. Why do you doubt? That's the big question. Why do you doubt? Why are you wavering? Uh, why are you allowing yourself to become unsteady in this situation? God is saying, just call out to me. I'm right there to help you so that you can overcome and be an overcomer in this situation. And last but not least, verse 32 says this. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worship him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Amen. God is encouraging someone to take his hand. Allow God to walk you to that other side. Allow God to help you overcome the doubts in your life. Allow God to get you to that place where you're able to overcome any doubts or any fears because he's there. For God will cause his spirit to overtake you, to, to encourage you in that place. Amen. You might say today, I don't know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to encourage you today to cry out to him and say, Lord, save me. I'm sinking right now. I'm sinking in this place of doubt. I'm speak sinking in this place of despair. And Lord, I need you to save me. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that we're able to spend in your word. I pray in the name of Jesus that that person that says, forgive me, Lord. Save me in this place that I'm in. Help me to walk in you. That as they walk in you, that you will continue to love on them, Lord God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. That they will walk renewed in you even now. We plead your blood over their life, Lord. We pray that you continue to guide them in the planned path of righteousness for your namesake. We thank you for this time in your word. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. We praise you that you got the glory. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, that's my time. I want to encourage you to give. Um, you'll see that uh, you have an opportunity on tithely. You also have an opportunity to mail in your tithe and your offerings. You also have an opportunity um, to deliver um, your tithe or your offerings to the church as well. Um, so we just want to encourage you in that. We also want to encourage you to um, like us and follow us on Facebook and to like our page on YouTube. And we just want you to be encouraged today. Go in peace and go in the Lord. Be blessed.